Also in your health headlines, the challenges that come from giving birth don't just stop when the baby is out, right? Um, some can be hard to talk about and potentially leave you with long-term issues, specifically your pelvic floor. So this morning we are joined by Dr. Marcy Crouch, also known as the Down There Doc, <laughs> which is just a fantastic name. Thanks so much for being here. Of course, thank you for having me. Yeah, so now men, don't leave. This is for you too, because I feel like it may be weird for men to hear, but yeah. women have to go through these things. So it'd be nice if they had a partner that knew what was going on. 100%. Okay, so let's start with what we have going on here. This is a <laughs> diagram of sorts of the pelvic floor. Yes, this is my pelvis. She comes with me everywhere. So pelvic floor muscles really are, I would say, one of the most important group of muscles in our body and often the most ignored or neglected. Mm. So they sit at the bottom of the pelvis and they have to hold everything in and they have to let things come out. So in pregnancy, those muscles over a period of nine months have to hold up a growing baby, a growing uterus, a placenta, all of this extra weight. And these muscles are the same as any other muscle in our body, like our bicep or our calf muscle. So they can be injured or overused just like any other muscles like that. Okay, so then what happens when there are problems with the pelvic floor and is it just pregnant women? Mm -hmm. or can anybody of sorts have yeah, these problems? Yeah, great question. Anybody can have pelvic floor issues. We see it most commonly in women. Okay. The CDC reports there's about 3.6 million births in the U.S. and one in three women have pelvic floor issues. So that's about a million women per year. That's a huge number. Yeah. The most common symptoms that we see, leaking urine with laugh, cough, or sneeze, jumping on a trampoline. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of our moms are like, oh my yeah. gosh, I can't do that. I can't run. Pelvic organ prolapse, which is where the organs sit a little bit lower, and then pain with intimacy. Okay. So I think if people are listening to this and this, you know, they they have some of these problems, mm -hmm. you might feel heard. That's mm -hmm. what kind of this is for. We yes. want to, you know, show people that you're not alone in these things. And there are actually specific things that you say that you do and don't do to kind of strengthen that pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Some of them I think sound a little crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And I'm sure you can find lots of crazy things yeah. out there online for sure. But yeah, I think the most important thing is knowing that common and normal are two separate things. Right. Right. Just because something is common doesn't mean that it's normal. And we are told all the time where we read in social media that we have to do Kegels and we right. have to do like a hundred sets of Kegels a day and always do your Kegels, Kegels. And like, that's only one piece of the puzzle. And in fact, that can sometimes make it worse. And it's so hard to actually do those correctly. So that's where mm. we come in as physical therapists. Okay. And then you also don't hover over public <gasps> toilets? Yes. that We were just talking about that <laughs> back in the, in the green room. Yes. That's like such a big myth. So yeah. when we go to the bathroom, our pelvic floor muscles have to relax and open. And if we're hovering over a toilet seat, we're engaging all of those muscles. And it makes it harder to go and okay. then that can lead to some long-term problems. Never okay. knew. You never I knew know. that. So, and the blowing of the nose as well. Yes, I say that a lot. So my mom is a nose blower on the <laughs> toilet, so it's just like a habit. But when you're going to the bathroom, those muscles are relaxed, right? So if you blow your nose or if you're pushing really hard or straining, it's a lot of excess pressure down on the pelvic floor and that can make leaking or prolapse worse. Okay, so why do you think these are so taboo to talk mm -hmm. about? Yeah, it's such a great question. I mean, I love talking about them. <laughs> I mean, I will talk about this all day long <laughs> if I could. Um, but you know, it's a very intimate area, right? right? It's your privates. So we're taught our whole life to like not talk about it yeah. and not tell anybody about it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we start to experience these issues. And if we bring them up to our medical professionals, we're told a lot, ah, well, that's just what you get for having a baby. Right. Of course, it's normal. Your grandma will be like, oh yeah, I have that too. Yeah. Your friends, oh yeah, that happens to me. But the more that we can bring it out into the open and really give women the help that they need, the less taboo it becomes. Yeah. I mean, I, wanted to, I want pelvic floor PT to be as common as Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went on like every corner so yeah. women aren't suffering. I mean, a million women per year is too much in the U.S. alone. Okay. So hey, just very quickly, how can people get help from you or yep. in general? Yeah, yeah. So you can find me online, um, thedownthereduck.com. I hang out on Instagram, also at the Down There Doc, and just shoot us a message. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Brooks, you. I know you learned something. I did. I learned a lot of stuff. <laughs> and as somebody who's about to be a dad, I really did take a couple of things away from that.